Hey everybody and welcome to episode 223 of Unboxing Wednesdays for comics arriving in stores on Wednesday, February 4th, 2015. Ricky, you had a, a pretty awesome event uh, over the weekend. You had your deep sea launch party. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. Even though it launched like a while ago. This is kind of like a thank you party more than a launch party, right? <laughs> that's, that's true, that's yeah. true. But uh, yeah, I mean it was nice. We had some money left over for the Kickstarter. So we threw uh, through party. Isn't that nice? Instead of taking all that hard-earned uh, dollars from the fans uh, <laughs> that you had extra and say, I'm going to buy myself a new fancy fur coat, you well, decided to give back. Well, this was after the fur coat. Oh. So. <laughs> oh. Here I was thinking you were all being no. uh, generous, but I guess I guess I had it wrong. No, so it was nice. We invited people over. We had free uh, food and drinks, libations for people. Yeah, it was a good time. I enjoyed myself. I'm excited this week about the Daredevil trailer, which will be airing on Wednesday. Isn't it just a teaser? It's a teaser, but 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 uh, tonight on Tuesday, they released a teaser of the teaser. Mm -hmm. So we got like a 15 second look at the Daredevil Netflix series, and then uh, yeah, and he's just wearing what a black mask with uh, black. I skin. I don't even know what he was wearing. I don't even know. <laughs> I couldn't like if it was grainy. I couldn't really see. Yeah. But it's awesome. Would you like better that or the Ant-Man ant size trailer where it was like super small? Uh, I th I have more hope for the Daredevil show, <laughs> I think. Yeah. I think the Daredevil show is 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 where it's going to be at. There's so much more you can do with a TV show than you can do with a movie. So That's true. A really well done show. Do you think we should all just start making TV shows? We should. Uh, Unboxing Wednesdays, for example, has been going for That's 223 true. episodes. And what a story we've been able to tell. <laughs> The greatest story ever told. Yes. Uh, Ricky, let's stop with the babble and get to the unboxing. Let's go ahead and open some boxes. While Ricky's putting away all those fine looking comic books, I just want to remind everybody about a little website called comicboxer.com. If you go to comicboxer.com, you will be presented with the opportunity to sign up to get a monthly, uh, what I like to call a comic convention in a box, sent straight to your door or to be picked up here at Stadium Comics, of anywhere from five to seven of the hottest comic book titles of the month. I just finished packing up last month's selection of uh, Comic Boxer books. And let me tell you, there was some awesome stuff in there. There was uh, some really cool variants, uh, some badass number one issues, as well as a signed uh, edition of a certain comic. Um, I think everybody who receives last month's box will be very, very happy. And uh, I can't wait to show you what's in this month's Comic Boxer uh, selection. But you got to sign up to get one sent out to you. Um, so head over to ComicBoxer.com. Plans start uh, for as low as $17.99 per month. Um, and there's been some awesome stuff in Comic Boxer over the last few months. For instance, did you know that Edge of Spider-Verse number 2 was a Comic Boxer selection a few months back? And that book right now is worth like 70 bucks. That's crazy. Um, so we try, to, we try to find the find the gems that are going to uh, either have some value somewhere down the road or that are going to be really uh, awesome stories that you need to check out. Uh, so it kind of serves a dual purpose. So check that out at comicboxer.com. Alright, first up today we've got some Throne of Atlantis figures from DC Comics. Here's Mera and Ocean Master. Here is Black Manta. And we got a restock on this guy, Ultron, the Marvel Select figure. From Funko, we've got the Honey Lemon action figure from Big Hero 6. And we've got Murloc from World of Warcraft. And how cool is this? It's X-Men Deadpool. How do you think Deadpool looks in the blue and yellow compared to the red and black? Not too, not too shabby, I'd say. Another week, another Harley Quinn statue, this time in the form of a Harley Quinn bust designed by Jim Lee. Moving on to the collected editions, we have Teen Titans Volume 5. Volume 1 of Spider-Man 2099, and Volume 3 of the Earth-1 uh, original graphic novel for Superman. Okay, we've got Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Issue 3 of 6. Uh, some inking in this issue by our good friend Adam Gorham, who was just announced uh, yesterday that he's going to be working on a four-issue miniseries for Valiant with Alish Cott. The name of the series is going to be called Dead Drop, and uh, with those two working on the book, you know you're going to get uh, some awesome results, so we can't wait to see that. Joe Benitez, uh, Lady Mechanica, issue 0 and 1 gets reprinted here. 
This is in advance of um, the long-awaited, I believe, fourth issue, which will be coming out in the near future. American Vampire, second cycle, number six. New from Valiant, it's Imperium, number one. G.I. Joe, number five. The Woods, number ten. Angel and Faith, season ten, number eleven. From Dark Horse, we have Rat God, number one of five. That is one scary-looking cover. Hellboy and the BPRD, 1952, number 3. Birthright, issue 5. East of West, number 17. Witches, issue 4. New from Top Cow, it's Postal, number 1. There's two regular covers. And we've got this variant cover. Saga, number 25. It's a rap cover. Cluster, issue number 1, a new one from Boom Studios and the Mind of Ed Brisson. Here is the Cluster variant. We've also got this variant for Cluster and this variant as well. Transformers, More Than Meets the Eye, issue 37. Here's the subcover and the variant. And then we have this, Spawn, issue 250, a landmark issue um, featuring covers by several different artists. And uh, the return of Al Simmons, we're told. Uh, so can't wait, wait to read this one and see how Al Simmons comes back. This is the Greg Capullo cover, the Sean Murphy cover. Here's the Spawn cover by Jock. I believe this cover is by Philip Tan. Then we have the Scotty Young Spawn cover, and the Todd McFarlane Spawn cover. Uh, then we have a black and white version of Jock's cover, and a black and white version of Greg Capullo's cover. We also have a black and white version of the Todd McFarlane cover, and a black and white version of the Scotty Young cover. And then finally today, the new one from Grant Morrison and Chris Burnham, it's Nameless, issue number one. Lots of high expectations for this book. Uh, I'm sure a lot of Grant Morrison's fans will be picking this up this week. Okay, on to DC. We have a second printing of Deathstroke, issue number one. We've got Flash Season Zero, number five. Earth Two, number 31. Batman Eternal, number 44. Green Lantern, number 39. This month, Harley Quinn is the theme of the uh, DC variant covers. So here is the Harley Quinn Green Lantern variant. Batman 66, number 19. Grayson, number seven. Here is the Grayson number 7 Harley Quinn variant. Earth 2 World's End issue number 18. Green Arrow number 39. Action Comics 39. Bearded Superman in this one. Check it out. Here's the Action Comics variant. Here is the Action Comics Harley Quinn variant. Lobo issue number 5. Injustice Gods Among Us Year 3 number 8. Aquaman and the Others number 10. Future's End number 40. Swamp Thing number 39. Jeff Johns and John Romita Jr.'s Superman, issue 38. It's also a rap cover. And then we have Francis Manipal and Brian Buccioletto's Detective Comics, number 39. If you're watching Gotham right now and really digging the Harvey Bullock character, consider picking up this story arc of Detective Comics, as Harvey Bullock uh, features prominently uh, in this uh, anarchy storyline. Here is the Detective Comics 39 variant, and the Detective Comics uh, 39 Harley Quinn variant. All right, moving on to Marvel, we've got a fourth printing now of uh, Gwen Stacy Spider-Woman, which is Edge of Spider-Verse issue number two. The uh, Spider-Gwen ongoing series starts uh, at the end of February, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, one of the most successful character launches, I think, in the last um, uh, considerable amount of time for Marvel Comics. So uh, I think we'll be seeing a lot more of Spider-Gwen over the uh, next few years. Spider-Woman issue 2 gets a second printing. We've got Wolverine's number 5, the Ant-Man movie Prelude issue 1 of 2, and the Ant-Man comic series issue number 2. Here are the two Ant-Man variants for this week. Operation Sin number 2, Angela Asgard's Assassin issue number 3, Miss Marvel number 11, Avengers issue number 41. Here is the Avengers Phil Noto cover. This month Marvel's doing a theme of uh, Phil Noto covers. He's an awesome artist. These covers are going to be really unique. Punisher number 15, Hulk number 11. Here's the Hulk Phil Noto variant. Hawkeye number 21, the second to last issue of this series. All new Captain America Fear Him, issue number 1. Unbeatable Squirrel Girl number 2. We've got Return of the Living Deadpool, issue number 1. Here's the Ryan Stegman variant for that book. The start of the Guardians of the Galaxy and X-Men crossover event Black Vortex is here in uh, the Black Vortex Alpha. And here is the second cover for that book, as well as the variant cover. 
And finally for Marvel today we have Star Wars issue number two. Star Wars number one was a huge uh, success uh, as far as Marvel Comics is concerned. Uh, no other comic since 1993 was printed more than uh, the first issue of Star Wars number one. It was printed over a million times. Um, and the, f the last time that happened was in 1993 with um, Batman number 500. So we'll, uh, it'll be curious to see how many of number two uh, ends up being sold. I think uh, the general consensus was on issue number one that it was a fairly well written story and really captured the feel of the Star Wars universe. Uh, so I'm sure that we've got a lot of uh, uh, good things in store here with issue number two. Here is the awesome Han Solo action figure variant for that book. Here is one of the variants, another variant, and the John Cassidy black and white variant edition. All right, prize time. Last week we were giving out a copy of Uncanny Avengers number one. We asked you guys, instead of Battle World, what kind of world would you make? Uh, we got some pretty awesome answers. Mr. Vortex uh, H said, stupid amount of death world. That's it. You know, that'd be the way Marvel's going right now with everyone dying. That'd be great. Um, Ken Ives said, poutine world, where everything is smothered in cheese and gravy. That is mildly erotic. Um, maybe it's just me as a Canadian, but I find that uh, kind of sexy. Epic Gamer Vid 21 said, I would set it in a Miley Cyrus wrecking ball world where the battle would take place on the wrecking ball as everyone's ears bleed and they scrape out their eyes. I'm pretty sure this guy has commented multiple times about uh, Miley Cyrus's wrecking ball, which is fine, but um, the song is like two years old now. So maybe you should leave Miley alone. What's that guy? Chris, uh... I don't remember his name, but he's all like, Leave Britney alone. Yeah, you know that Leave Britney alone guy? Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what I am from Miley Cyrus. The One Ring 987 said, I would create a world that has no stadium comics, so I will have a lot more spare time, but I would be a lot more depressed. Well, that's... I don't know how to respond to that comment, because not only would I be out of a job, I probably wouldn't exist. Yes. I was born from the store. And you being depressed sucks too. So how about we don't live in that world, huh? But the winner goes to Smash Pro 67 who said, I would create the bathroom world where every character fights in a big and dirty industrial bathroom and they would fight on top of the toilet lid in sort of a Star Wars way and set, set up traps like falling down the toilet, the sink, or the tub hole. And every three hours, the toilet flushes and the bathroom smells like poop for 30 minutes. I just wanted to say poop a whole bunch of times in toilets. And um, that's really it. But <laughs> could you imagine all these people fighting on toilets? Hilarious. <laughs> you know, I think I'm like 12 years old. <laughs> I find that stuff hilarious. I don't know, just me? I don't know. But congratulations. Smash Pro 67, your way mature comment has won you a copy of Uncanny Avengers number one. So this week what we're giving out is a copy of Nameless number one by Grant Morrison, published by Image. Ooh. So the book is called Nameless, but I'm sure these three guys have names. So uh, what are their names? I give this guy, his name is uh, Hand McGee. This guy here is uh, Eyeball Dude. This guy here is Circle Lines. So, Hand McGee, um, Eyeball Dude, Circle Lines, they grace the cover of Nameless. So, I'm sure you can come up with way clever names. So, the best answer wins a copy of Nameless. Alright, everybody, that is it for this week. Thank you once again for watching. We had a lot of cool books uh, that came out this week, and a lot more cool ones to show you next week. So, make sure you. Uh, Come back uh, around this time next Wednesday to see what else we have in store. You can connect with us on any of the websites you see listed here on your screen. Check out our friend uh, Louis' recap podcast. He'll get you all caught up on everything to do in the world of comics. Check out comicboxer.com. And we'll see you all next time for episode 224 of Unboxing Wednesdays. Take care, everybody. Enjoy your comics this week.